What's good? It's Woog. Please, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are into the fight talk. Ryan Garcia, 20-0 versus Luke Campbell, 20-3. This should actually be Bill, Luke Campbell versus Ryan Garcia, with Luke Campbell's name first since he's the higher ranked fired, fighter by Ring Magazine. But because Ryan Garcia is the popular fighter that they're pushing, the up-and-coming star, his name is being billed first here, for what it's worth. Bold choice of opponent for Ryan Garcia, and maybe a desperate one for his promoter, Golden Boy, in the streaming platform, DAZN. So I see this tremendously exciting young crop of lightweight and lightweight-ish fighters lumping into two groups. I see there being a proven group of elite talent, skill, and performance. In that group, we have Gervonta Davis and now also Teofimo Lopez, who just leapfrogged everybody with that stunning win over legend Vasily Lomachenko. Then we've got the appear to be skilled and talented, but just haven't had the chance to prove it at the elite level yet. In that group, there's Devin Haney, Shakur Stevenson, and Ryan Garcia. Little side note, a little further up at welterweight, you've also got Virgil Ortiz Jr. and Jerron Boots Ennis. Keep your eye on those two. So there are these two groups of young lightweights, but if you hear these dudes talk, you wouldn't know which is which. You've got some unprovens doing a lot of barking at the more provens. Makes it kind of interesting. But it also makes me wonder whether some of the talent here is smoke and mirrors. And in full disclosure, Ryan Garcia is at the top of could be smoke and mirrors list. Now he and Devin Haney are a tad younger than Teofimo Lopez and a few years younger than Tank Davis. So they've had a couple years less to prove themselves against quality opponents. But I'd seen the just turned 22 year old Devin Haney fighting professionally as a 16 and 17 year old versus grown men in Tijuana, Mexico. By the way, while running Real Devin Haney TV YouTube channel and while being trained by Floyd Mayweather Sr. at the time. So this at least tells me that the kid is serious business and that people who are in the know are taking interest. But I'm looking at a now 22 year old Ryan Garcia like there's just no way that this kid who looks like a Latino Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell is also the biggest ass kicker at 135. Seriously, it's a very rare thing that you get someone who looks like a model or actor and is the most dangerous fighter out there. But then you have your occasional unicorns, Cassius Clay Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, Oscar De La Hoya. Ryan Garcia looks like he should be in a boy band, not in the ring versus Teofimo Lopez or Gervonta Tank Davis, who hails from West Baltimore. More specifically, the Sandtown neighborhood, where the unemployment rate is greater than 50%. That's also, by the way, the same neighborhood that Cab Calloway, Billie Holiday, Thurgood Marshall come from. But yo, a lot of these fighters come from the mud. So yeah, sometimes when I see the next big hype and they're only 18 years old and look like a pop star, my instincts to be a little skeptical. But then you start digging and you learn that Ryan Garcia had an amateur career record of 215 wins and 15 losses, that he was also a several time national amateur champion. And that like Devin Haney, Garcia turned pro young, 17, and started fighting in Tijuana, Mexico instead of going the Olympic route. But professionally, the best Garcia's fought thus far has been Puerto Rican journeyman Jason Velez, decent but not nearly elite Romero Duno, and veteran journeyman Francisco Fonseca. And he's now stepping up to fight Luke Campbell, who's already gone a full hard 12 rounds with Vasil Lomachenko and fought a close split decision loss versus Jorge Linares. And those account for two of Campbell's only three losses. Luke Campbell was a 2012 Olympic gold medalist. Coincidentally, that's also the Olympics that took place in London. But yeah, this guy is a very high quality fighter and has been knocking on the door of the elite for the past three to four years. He's 33 and knows that in order to stay in that upper tier of lightweight, he cannot be the stepping stone for this Ricky Martin looking social media heartthrob. Luke Campbell needs to seize the moment or he'll be knocked down a gatekeeper status at best which is kind of what he's already positioned to play here, right? I mean, I'd assume that Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Boy wouldn't match their guy Garcia up with Campbell if they didn't think he'd have a good shot at winning, right? Now, Golden Boy, having just lost Canelo Alvarez, their cash cow, is kind of up against it and in their relationship with DAZN as well. 
And Garcia has been acting like a disgruntled employee over at Golden Boy and has really been disrespecting Oscar in the press, expressing his dissatisfaction over their handling of his career. I'm wondering if Oscar finally said, F it, shrugs, and then gives this rambunctious youngin possibly more than he can chew with Luke Campbell and say, hey, if my asset is what it appears to be, then we should find out against a B plus, maybe A minus level fighter like Campbell. But man, this is a big step up in competition. And the biggest stat that jumps out at me here is that Ryan Garcia's last three fights have ended in the first round, first round, and second round. He dusted those opponents off quickly. That means that he's fought less than four rounds in the past three fights. More specifically, that's less than six minutes of action in the past two years. Is that enough live game time to prepare you for a guy as experienced as Luke Campbell who just went a very competitive 12 rounds with Loma? I'm not even calling Ryan Garcia fool's gold here. His amateur record speaks for itself and he's now training with Canelo Alvarez and is being trained by Canelo's co-trainer and now manager Eddie Reynoso and with Jose Chepo Reynoso. So Garcia's in great company and I think that Canelo's team would have an idea of where Garcia is development wise and probably wouldn't feed Garcia to the Sharks if he wasn't ready. And let's be honest, Ryan Garcia looks like a lightning fast killer in those training videos. His hands look special. And looking at this kid doing this, it all seems too good to be true. But then you see him in his first step up fight versus Fonseca, who for what it's worth, did make it to the eighth round versus Tank Davis three years ago. And Garcia obliterates Fonseca in the first round with a beautiful counter left hook. A hook that's just as pretty and crisp as the ones in the Instagram videos. And Fonseca is flat on his back, eyes wide open, motionless. Garcia calmly drops to a knee. His buddy Logan or Jake Paul is in the crowd going crazy. This whole thing is just weird and I'm not exactly sure what to make of it. But I'll say this, Garcia does seem to be a special puncher, a born puncher. I just made a video about uh, Devin Haney and the lightweight division, and I said that Devin, Devin Haney seems to have all the fixings, all the tools of a seasoned, uh, super skilled fighter, but doesn't appear to be a born puncher. They say punches are born, not made. Garcia does seem like a born puncher, and he's tall and very fast, powerful hands. Plus, the timing and precision of that Fonseca knockout punch was perfect, as was the one versus Duno. We just haven't seen too much of what happens when a fight doesn't end in the first couple rounds, and you have to do the work in the trenches when the fight starts getting ugly. Now, I'd seen those fights versus Jason Velez and Carlos Morales both go the distance in 2018, and Garcia didn't look special in those. In fact, the crowd was booing him several times throughout those fights and booed him in one of those post-fight interviews. It wasn't Garcia's best moment. Now, if Garcia is able to nail Luke Campbell with an explosive highlight reel type of punch, then great. But nobody's ever done that to Campbell. I'm expecting this to go at least a few rounds. Then what? How many technical strides and improvements the fundamentals has Garcia made over the past two years since the last time he had to go some rounds? But I truly believe that greatness takes time. I don't think Garcia is far enough along on his journey to beat Campbell. I think Campbell will out jab him, will clinch when there is danger, and will probably neutralize some of Garcia's devastating tools, advantages or will at least make Garcia more reluctant to just let his hands go. Garcia's got great counters, but Campbell is smart enough to operate behind a jab and to make Garcia have to leave himself a little exposed himself if he's trying to land repeatedly with a big shot. I expect Campbell to win a lot of the slow rounds, as Richard Dwyer here on YouTube would call them. The rounds where there isn't a knockdown, where there isn't a ton of exhilarating action. Look. I think that Garcia can get to a point where his resume is as lit as his 7.5 million Instagram following is. But I think that he's more likely to lose this fight than to win at this point versus Luke Campbell, which would be a pretty big setback, especially given the huge expectations and the public pressure for Garcia, like Devin Haney, to keep pace with the slightly older contemporaries, Gervonta Davis and Teofimo Lopez who are coming off outstanding and game-changing performances, respectively. So I'm taking Luke Campbell via decision in this one. 
it would be very impressive if Ryan Garcia can beat Luke Campbell by decision especially. I, I think that it would be more impressive, in fact, if he beats Campbell by decision than by knockout. I know that he could catch him with a shot and put, it seems like, just about anybody out with the right punch. He has that type of special power, it appears. So it would actually tell me more about Garcia's abilities and skills if he could beat Campbell via decision. But I'm taking Campbell by decision in this one. But let me know your thoughts on this fight. By the way, Ryan Garcia really does have 7.5 million followers on Instagram. By contrast, Errol Spence, a super proven champion, has 660,000 followers. Teofimo Lopez has 373,000. Tyson Fury has half of Garcia's following with 3.8 million. Even the great and super popular Canelo Alvarez has 7 million followers, still slightly less than newcomer Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia is kind of a big deal. I'm just always leery in these don't put the cart before the horse scenarios, especially in a sport like boxing. Please leave your comments in the comments, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are into the fight talk. I'm Wook. Thanks for tuning in.